Welcome to another Physics Thursday. I want to talk to you today about something new I'm doing in one of my intro courses, or at least new to me. Uh, I'm using video assessments as the primary way of evaluating what my students have learned. Uh, this is something I picked up from Rhett Allen. Uh, the idea is that instead of collecting written work, either in the form of homework, exams, lab reports, what have you, uh, you have the students record a video about some problem uh, that they solved. Uh, I guess you could extend it to like doing an experiment or something, but I'm primarily doing it as a, as a homework slash exam uh, replacement. And the reason I bring it up on Computational Thursdays is because um, about half my problems are pencil and paper based and the other half are vPython based. And the way this class is set up, the students get to choose which ones they complete. They can either do a problem by hand or they can do it on vPython. And a good number of them are choosing the vPython option. I'm pretty uh, satisfied uh, with that, that a good number of them see it as relevant and interesting and accessible. What's interesting about it is that most of the students, they, they solve the problem ahead of time. So in the case of vPython, they're writing their code, they're making modifications, et cetera. And then they're recording an overview, almost an explainer video about it. Um, and I keep the time limited to five minutes per video uh, so that I'm not stuck grading all week. Um, but what's interesting about it is that I feel like I get so much more insight into my students' reasoning, into their thinking, into how much they actually understand as opposed to what they were able to cobble together even if they didn't understand it. And a number of them are even willing to submit videos where they get halfway through and say, and I didn't know what to do next. And so I'm looking forward to learning what I need to do next to, to finish this problem, uh, which is great. It's also interesting how in the video, a number of them will find a mistake that they made and then fix it, which of course they would not have found if they were just submitting the code or just submitting the written assignment. They get about halfway through and say, oh, wait a minute, that should be a negative number. And they make the change, they carry out the rest of the master, they rerun the code, whatever they need to do. And it's just, that's another revision pass that they usually don't take on their homework and exams. And honestly, that we kind of discourage in written assignments, right? Because uh, if they're always just getting heaped with more and more problems that they have to move on to, no, they're not gonna take the time to make a revision pass. But with having to record the video, they do find those issues and they even fix them live there on camera, which I, I applaud. So yeah, that's been really interesting. Uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on how uh, this class goes because if it goes well, I'll keep doing this. Uh, if not, you know, I'll keep revising it. But, uh, you know, hearing from Rhett and other folks who have done video assessments, it sounds like people who go video assessment usually don't go back because it usually works out so much better in terms of just being able to understand, you know, what your students uh, what your students have learned. One more thing I'll say, I really feel like I'm getting to know my students better with these video assessments because I have, in, in my two sections of this class, I have a total of about 160 students. And I'm sorry, there's just no way I'm gonna learn their names in class or off the roll or from the couple of students who will come to office hours. But watching these videos, hearing their voices, seeing their faces in the webcams, hearing their unique greetings in each video because they each start there are videos with a slightly different greeting compared to each other. Uh, it's interesting because like a video will come up and I'll say, oh, this is this is John Bob and I love John Bob's videos. And oh, John Bob's kids are talking in the background again. You know, it's just, it's interesting. It's, it's a cool way to kind of get to know them and just be able to attach a little bit of significance to the name and the voice along with, uh, along with what they're learning. So uh, have you tried this in your classes? Have you done something similar to this it, it's, as any sort of alternative to the, the sort of sterile, boring handwritten work? Uh, let me know in the comments below or if this sounds interesting to you, uh, send me some questions. Uh, let me know what questions you would ask about this, uh, this implementation I've got going on. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.